When I wear this cardigan, I'm not sure if I look cool or if I look like Dracula trying to be casual. <laughs> As a watch fan, my name is Michael. I'm usually the editor for Theo and Harris, but now I make videos too regularly, so I don't really know what I am, but I'm here. Anyways, today I want to talk about watch collecting and just how I do it and my methodologies behind it. Not that there's really a correct way of watch collecting. I just figured that I would share what I do and I would love to hear how you guys collect down below or what you collect, what your favorite watch is, what your grail is, etc. But before we jump into that, I want to do two quick things. The first is that we at Theo and Harris want to thank our sponsor for this video, Woody's. I'll go into more detail on that in a little bit. The second thing I want to say is that I am wearing a Cartier Santos that I wore in my last video. I just love this watch. I think it's so beautiful. I love the polishing and uh, it's small but it's kind of turning into like my watch. I have a Rolex Datejust, a Universal Genève and a few other watches in my collection but this is kind of turning into the to the watch I've been wearing every day. A collection is always growing and shrinking, but this Cartier Santos and my Rolex Datejust, I think are two watches that are gonna stay in my watch collection permanently. Rolex Datejust, definitely, I've done so many things with it that if I sell it, I would just feel wrong. You know, I feel like I'm giving someone my liver, and I need my liver, although I guess the liver grows back. So anyway, but for now, watch collecting. Okay, so a little bit about me. I've always been obsessed with collecting things. When I was little, I used to collect rocks. Then I started collecting coins. Then at 16 years old, I became a camp counselor. The director of the camp counselor said, hey guys, Guys, what's up? Welcome to your first job. You're all like 15 years old. Here's a list of things that you would need. And on that list, it was like bathing suit, shirt, pants, sunscreen, zinc stuff for your, whatever, you know, typical camp counselor things. And then on the bottom it said not necessary, but I also suggest that you get a watch. And I was like, oh hell yeah. So right after work, I zoomed to Macy's with my mom. I march over to the watch section and I say, oh yeah, that's the watch I want. It has three different time zones on it and not like all built into the dial. It has three three different dials. And then to make it even better, if you open the back up, it had three different cheap quartz movements and the watch I think was 55 millimeters. So it was, it was literally like this big. If I put it on my wrist, like it didn't only spill over, it like spilled over onto other people's arms. It was just so, so big. And I think I was 15 or 16 years old and it looked like I had like Captain America's shield on my wrist as I walked around. And I just loved that watch. I even remember as I was buying the watch, an old man came up to me and was like, "That's a that watch is too big for your wrist. And I was like, yeah, right, old man. You don't understand fashion. And then now look at me. I have a tiny watch on that people think is a girl's watch. Anyway, so eventually I looked down at my wrist and was just like, all right, this is way too too big and I moved on to the Timex Expedition which I don't know if you can see very well. And this is really the first watch that I really, really, really loved. I wore this watch all through high school. Actually, this isn't the watch I wore all throughout high school because the first one, the battery broke and I tore the back off and then couldn't get the back on, so I just threw the watch away. But this Timex Expedition, I absolutely loved. I used to go swimming with it all the time. I thought the Indiglo feature was so cool. I'm not quite sure if I'm remembering this 100% correctly, but the way Indiglo works is that there's a film over the dial of the watch. And when you push the crown in, it sends an electrical charge through the film, which which lights it up that bluish color, which I think is sick. I actually still love this watch, 38 millimeters. Anyways, I'm gonna fast forward because this is not a collection review, but I ended up meeting this guy online that was selling a ton of watches, and I said, hey, I'll photograph those watches for you. And he, for some reason, said sure, and started just sending me tons and tons and tons of vintage watches. So I probably photographed like eight to 900 watches. I was allowed to wear them all, so I wore them all the time. Really, any watch that you can think of, I've had and photographed and shipped and everything like that. So I worked with watches for super long time, long before I worked with Theo and Harris. And actually, right before I worked for Theo and Harris, I was flipping watches myself. I was making a feature film at the time and I needed to raise money for it. So I bought a bunch of watches continuously and I would get them serviced, clean them up, flip them, keep going, keep going, keep going. Really at the end of the day, all I'm saying is that I've worked with a bunch of watches, so hopefully I have some credibility. But again, like I said before, there's really zero rules for watch collecting. So anything I say, you can disagree with. It's no big deal. Oh, really quick interlude. I was on an improv team in college and they all knew I loved watches. So for my going away gift, they got me a custom watch with our logo on it that looks strangely like the Jurassic Park logo. Okay, so the biggest and most important thing that I wanna say is that if you're starting a watch collection or if you have a watch collection, make sure that watch collection is for for you. And what I mean by that is that really no one else cares as deeply as you want them to about your watches. I'll care about your watch, but really only as I'm seeing it. When you walk away, I'll be like, damn, that was a cool watch, but I'm not living with it like you. 
if that makes sense. I always see people asking, you know, like, what should I get to balance my collection out? What should I get to expand and stuff like that? And that's great. I think asking questions and getting suggestions about different watches from people is a great thing. But never look at your collection if you're happy with it and say, well, you know, I love dive watches and I have 10 of them, but I should really get a dress watch because then I'll have a more balanced collection. That doesn't really make sense. If you only like dive watches, just get dive watches. If you're the type of person that's like, okay, when I go out, I want a dress watch. When I'm swimming, I want a dive watch. When I'm doing something sporty, I want a sports watch. Then it makes more sense to expand and get different types of watches. But if you're gonna get a watch just because other people think that your collection is imbalanced, then you shouldn't get that watch. If you think it's imbalanced, then you should. The best thing I saw online was actually on Reddit. If you've never been on r slash watches, I highly recommend you check it out. Tons of watch stuff. But there was a post, I think it was on r slash watches or just Reddit in general. And the guy said, ladies, what type of watch do you like to see on a man? And the top rated comment was, as long as the strap isn't Velcro, I don't even notice it. I've worn a lot of very loud, very gaudy watches or small watches, huge watches, old looking watches, new looking watches, and the amount I've been complimented on or even have had them noticed is very, very, very slim. Usually what happens is that if I'm hanging out with someone for a long time, then they might be like, oh, by the way, Mike, I like your watch. Or the other thing is if someone reads the brand name, if I have a fancy watch on and someone sees the brand name and they're like, oh, you have a Rolex? But honestly, I really, really hate when people call my watch out like that. I just can't stand it. If they say I like your watch, Usually my response is like, oh, thanks, it's from 1963. And then we move on from there instead of being like, oh, well, this is a Cartier. Oh, you have a Rolex? Okay, now we're cooking with gas. The second thing I want to say is that definitely if you have the chance to see your watch in person before you buy it, big purchase, small purchase, definitely go check it out. Obviously, if it's a small purchase for you, it has less importance. There's been so many times I will buy a watch, it gets to my house, I'm super excited, I open the package, and I'm just like, oh. But the nice thing is that when you go to a watch boutique, you can walk around and just be like, oh, that watch watch actually I didn't think I would like but I do I love that watch that happened to me with the Tudor black bays I thought they would be way too big went to a watch boutique and saw that they actually fit on my wrist super nicely and maybe one day I'll get one but before that I just always thought they were too big on the other hand I always thought Shinola watches were pretty stylish and then I went to the store and it literally was like dinner plate size watches and I was just like oh okay they're gross no offense to Shinola I just hate your watches okay so I have three other points but before we do that I want to talk about our sponsor Woody's really quick so Woody's makes button-down shirts and chinos custom made to fit you you and they come with a perfect fit guarantee which is pretty dope. Seriously though, if on your first order something isn't perfect, they'll ask you a couple questions, have their tailoring team review the notes, and then send you a complimentary remake free of charge. Uh -huh. So definitely check out their line of performance dress shirts or their casual line of winter flannels made to be super soft and comfortable. So if you're interested, it's really easy. Just go to woodiesclothing.com to create your size profile in seconds. No tape measure required, which is good because I can never measure my bust. I mean chest. What is it called? And you can customize your shirt right away. And the sweet part of checking out this video is that if you enter the exclusive code Theo and Harris, you'll get 15% off your first order. And this offer is valid through December 31st. So you can get Christmas presents for people even if you want. And I love Christmas, so get me a Christmas present. Here's my address. Anyways, that website is woodiesclothing.com and you can find their social media down below. Woo, back to watches. Okay, so the biggest thing I found out with all these watches that I photographed or flipped is that you need to find what you like really personally. And it's not as simple as I like dress watches or sports watches or anything like that. For me at least, as I saw more watches in person, as I photographed them and stuff, I realized what I liked. And for me, it's always like very specific things. Like I love matte white dials, I love matte black dials. A date window is very close to being a necessity for me. It goes hand wind, then automatic. There's all these different things that I prefer. The biggest one being though is I don't prefer circular watches. And I don't know if that's because I've had so many watches that I'm just sick of like the standard circular watch. But if a watch is a square or a rectangle or something shaped like that Hamilton, I forget what it's called. All watches like that, any weird shapes, I love. That's why I really love this episode of Hodinkee Talking Watches where they're going over this guy's collection and he has all these crazy case shapes and designs from Patek and Vacheron. I forget who else, but I'll link that below. You should definitely check that out. Those have some really crazy designs. I'm a huge fan of those. So that goes into a different piece of my collecting, and that is collecting watches with a really cool history, or just watches that have a lot of stuff behind them, because at the end of the day, the more and more I wear a watch, the more I get familiar with it. So, you know, I look at the design of the watches that I own, and of course, I love them, but they're not this, like, crazy new thing anymore. And then what usually happens is that I 
slowly started to appreciate the watch in a different way and that's because of its history. So I love the Rolex but I got the Rolex because I set a goal for myself that I was going to get a Rolex Datejust before I premiered my film. Obviously the Datejust was a huge accomplishment for me and the film was a huge accomplishment for me but the Datejust was a huge huge accomplishment for Rolex and it was really the first of its kind and I was thinking you know what better watch to add to my collection to commemorate my film than a Rolex Datejust. And I always obviously love the brand Rolex that's why I'll be doing a history of Rolex soon for this channel but that's that. Also another really cool side note is that in the Theo and Harris shop for a very long time was a solid gold Universal Genève pull router and I love that watch. I thought the history was so cool and then in an episode Christian said you know what better version of the Universal Genève pull router is there than a solid gold chocolate brown micro rotor version and I was just sitting there editing the episode and I was like Christian you're so right that really is it's the best example of the Universal Genève pull and I mentioned it in that edit through text and then I made a video and said how much I love that watch and it was one of my grails. I uploaded that video next morning got a call from Christian that was like give me your address I will send you the watch and now I have it and it's beautiful but it's also a Gerald Genève design which to me is amazing I have a Gerald Genta piece in my collection which is awesome but really when I think about like other watches that I want to add to my collection they usually have a story or reasoning behind them the next Rolex that I want to get is a bubble back Rolex from 1946 because I love the movie The Godfather and that is the only time that they mention a date in the film I forget who said it or where it is in the film but it's from the first film they mention the year 1946 and as I was watching it I was like that's it, that's what I want. A Rolex from 1946. Especially because there's a little piece of history that Rolex for a while had hand wind movements with an oyster case so you could swim with the watch. But what would happen is that people that had Rolexes at the time when they were hand wound would wind them, forget to screw the crown back in, and then go swimming with them and be like, oh, I forgot to screw it back in so your watch isn't waterproof? What's with that? And Hans Wildorf basically was like, okay, we'll add automatic. But I love that fact about Rolex where they're so utilitarian that they have these cases that seal down and then they push in an automatic movement and make the bubble back so that way your crown is screwed into your watch much much more much lower case of you getting your watch water damaged I really really love that fact so obviously there's a lot of watches that I love that I have there's a lot of watches that I love that I don't have I always go on the Theo and Harris website check out all those watches because I think they're sick and I always wish I had like 10 grand to spend on watches really would like to get a day date Christian maybe if I mention that he'll send me one but the biggest thing here is don't flip a watch that you have really good memories with or that you like because I promise that you're gonna regret it if you're looking at a really fancy watch and you're like, okay, if I sell my Seamaster, my Date Just, and my Day Day, I can get this Patek. Okay, let's do it. You grab all three and sell them. I swear and I promise that you will miss at least one of those watches so much because somewhere there's going to be a memory that you had with that watch that you really, really loved. Perfect example is I had a Saab 033, a Seiko. Absolutely loved that watch and I spent a whole summer with it and it was the last summer before I graduated and I made films with that watch. I hung out with my friends with that watch. I did a ton of things, but then I sold it and this very distinct distinct memory I had of me wearing my Sarb in a pool with my friends and being really nervous that it was going to get water damaged but also knowing that it was 100 meters water resistant I just thought I would try it out and I had a great night with my friends and at the same time I was like messing with my watch and just like goofing off and I really loved that moment and then I sold that watch and here's why I'm telling you this I sold that Sarb to fund my first vintage watch purchase for myself to keep and it was a solid rose gold mobilia vintage watch it was beautiful stunning watch 38 millimeters oversized. I absolutely loved the watch. And then one day I was sitting in a hotel room and I was thinking about that Sarb and I just got so sad. I was wearing that solid gold watch and I was like, you know, this is beautiful, but it doesn't have any history. And if I kept it long enough, it would obviously make a history, but I was like, no, I really want that summer back with my friends and like that's the watch that I looked at during that summer the whole time. So I ended up reaching out to the buyer and I was like, hey, is there any chance I could buy that watch back from you? I was like, I'll give you the exact same money, I'll give you a little bit more, or I'll buy you just another Sarb. Can you ship it back to me? And basically he was like, sorry, no, this is my watch. I'm holding on to it and I, I'm planning on keeping it. Sorry, dude. Which I totally understood and then I was just so sad about it. I was like, listen, I have this rose gold vintage watch. It's a Mobilia, 38 millimeters, oversized, beautiful. And I basically said, I will send that watch to you if you send the Sarb to me and he messaged me back like three seconds later and was like of course it's on its way now like what's your address I'll send it out quick but the point is that I love that watch I still have it and I can't trade it because I have such good memories with it it's worth more than really any other watch that I have so those are my tips this is a very long video I think I apologize if you thought it was boring but I want to thank you guys the audience for liking my videos first and foremost I really love videos and you guys liking them and being very positive about them gave me an outlet to make more so thank you guys 
guys so much. If you guys are interested in vintage watches like this Cartier, like the Universal Genève, like the Datejust, like really any vintage watch, check out the Theo and Harris watch shop. They also have straps, bags, watch, uh, what are the, you know, you uh, watch, watch rolls, really anything that you want. They also have shirts. I'm not sure if they have hats anymore, but they should start making pants and underwear. That way we can get decked out and just uh, live and die by Theo and Harris. All hail Theo and Harris. See you next week.